We just received a massive tech preview to Outcomes blog, guys, detailing a lot of things of what's going to be happening before the release of the game, what 343 is looking into, what things are not going to be happening before release, and a whole lot more with like weapon tunings and so much more, guys. We're going to break it all down in this video, so if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So 343 just dropped a big boy blog update, guys, detailing everything that they learned from the flights that we had back in late September, early October for the 4v4 flight and the BTB flight. After reading through this blog, I think there are four main categories you gotta look for. Things that are not happening anytime soon, what 343 is looking into, what's going to change post-launch, and what's already been changed pre-launch. And in this blog, 343 breaks up each gameplay element and section of Halo Infinite. So if you guys want to just jump around to what section you care about, timestamps in the description down below and we will be recapping everything at the end of this video but if you want all the details make sure you watch through everything which if you guys like these news and informational videos make sure you tap that like button it really helped out the video and try to get a better place within that youtube algorithm hey, if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with halo infinite as we're less than a month away from the release guys make sure you test subscribe so let's get right into the content here first section they talk about accessibility some of the pauses were the friend or foe outline system being able to fully remap your controller and keyboard ability to change text size across the entire game and subtitles and multiplayer some parts of feedback which seem to be carried over as well as the desired for auto sprint desire for more color controls a full colorblind mode and desire to customize placement and size of hud elements now 343 talks about like auto sprints and also additional color controls something that they definitely can add in a future season but something like hud customization requires a lot of work and a complete overhaul of systems which would make sense because that's a huge element to change. But 343 says that they're gonna be looking into these things and give you a better idea of what's gonna be coming around the corner soon. Next, we have the audio section. The positives were the weapons sounded powerful, added to the experience. The needler projectiles sound more glassy crystal compared to the last flight, which is great. The ambient sounds of fragmentation were very appreciated. People continue to enjoy both menu and multiplayer music, which is absolutely true. Oh, listen to this. Oh, vibe, vibe with me, chat. Oh, this is so good. This sounds so good. I, I don't want. I, like, I don't want to hit play. I just want to listen. Dude, listen, this is so so good. It's Halo, man. The musical riffs in game are a nice touch, which I totally agree. One part of feedback that they do mention is that the Needler Super Combine explosion sounds good, but can be a little quiet. And essentially with this 343 goes well we'll look into seeing if we can find a better way to add that super combine explosion in the mix i will say it's a little underwhelming when it comes to that explosion that happens with the needler it's still is super satisfying sounds great i just want to hear it more or the live section this is the like, xp and customization player expression kind of stuff we're talking about here so the positives here would be the customization looks great which is absolutely true halo of this customization is absolutely amazing especially from what we saw from the battle pass reveal on IGN guys that we covered on the channel yeah it looks really awesome some points of feedback though there's a lot of feedback with this so many players want to earn per match XP outside of the challenge system concerns around timed double XP boost efficiency because if you guys don't remember double XP runs in real time not in game time and the desire for a career ranking system in addition to the battle pass which if you guys remember the only type of progression that we have right now is in the battle pass for Halo Infinite now when it comes to earning XP outside of doing challenges well that's what they kind of did for the daily challenges which is play x amount of games and get some xp reward most of that time is play one game after like five games or something like that or 10 games and it's like play two games get some xp play some play three games get some xp play four games so something like that so there is a bit of like a scale to it where if you got those guys who play like six hours a day they're not gonna get crazy ahead of the people who play like maybe like an hour or two every other day which for you xp grinders that definitely does suck in a, as an experience seeing that your time that you're putting into the game the less xp that you're actually getting per game but this is a way for halo infinite to extend the player retention to make sure that people don't just grind through the battle pass within like the first month or whatever and just don't come back to the game which i totally understand the point of view of like if i'm playing the game i should be getting xp i should be getting the same amount of progression which totally makes sense but the thing is guys since they're monetizing progression now with the battle pass it's a whole nother beast when it comes to progression within halo infinite 
it. So I understand their decisions to kind of make these daily challenges of play X amount of games to get XP, slow down more with your progression with the more time that you play, but also they just don't want people who play a lot to get super ahead of everybody else when it comes to cool customization. This is certainly a point that's gonna be a lot of discussion within Halo Infinite. And we know right now that there is really like no way that they can add in like an external XP progression system before launch, which is less than a month away. So right now with the daily challenges being just play a game or play two games, play three games, get XP. It's essentially the per match XP system that you'd want just done through challenges. Obviously with more player feedback and getting a chance to actually play the full game, we'll get a better idea of how the system will actually play out. And they touch on double XP as we guys, like I said, it's a real time timer. So if you, it's a 30 minute timer. So once you hit double XP, a 30 minute timer starts. And that's 30 minutes in real time, not in amount of time you've played in game, just in real world time. So if you sit down, you know you gotta play for 30 minutes, hit that double XP. But some people want that to be in game time rather than just in real time. And they agree with this as well. And they're looking for a solution that they can provide in the future for this. Now, when it comes to additional career XP progression, kind of like what we have with the MCC right now, right? Or like we had with Halo 5 with up the grind up to 152. They mentioned that it is a team's top priority to put in like an additional ranking system that kind of show player progression over time rather than just per season like we have with the Battle Pass. But they do mention that it would be quite Require a ton of work with along with the UI team and also the interconnected systems and so this sounds like something that they're going to be added in eventually but not anytime soon. Next we have multiplayer feedback guys some juicy stuff here and basically people love training mode it's great it's a great opportunity to learn maps learn weapon spawns improve your aiming skills which I think IGN certainly could use a little bit of that. Some point of feedback though the players wanted to play on fragmentation and to have their friends join them as well within training mode. They mentioned here that training mode is actually time to your machine it's not anything that's connected to the internet or at all so you can actually play training mode offline if you would like so they said if they're going to try to make it so that you can connect to servers and things like that obviously it creates a lot of networking work that 34d needs to do they do say though that this issue of being able to join friends and play with bots is something that can be resolved within custom games which i would agree with that one nice thing about training mode is that you can change settings on the fly which is really nice but probably can only allow it because it's on your dedicated machine but within custom games you will be able to to jump on big team battle maps and play around with some bots. Next to talk about the combat sensor within Halo Infinite, they said that mostly they really like the motion tracker rather than the ability tracker that we had in the first flight. Uh, that this part of feedback says consistent reports that the range felt too small, especially in big team battle. Which for social modes, I totally agree with the motion tracker. I think that's the better way to go with it. Though I do prefer the ability tracker because it puts more emphasis on player awareness. But for social modes, yeah, just do a motion tracker. It's just easier and it's more traditional to Halo what people expect. They do mention that they actually are going to extend the radar range before launch from 18 meters that it was to 22 meters in big team battle, which is certainly a noticeable size larger. I actually kind of like the smaller radar just because with everyone having like gaming headsets on and the ability to connect with friends a lot easier within gaming now that a lot of times you're running people with teamwork and headsets and just using all types of information to do better, especially with the spot system as well in the game that I think a smaller radar would do better. If I remember correctly, Halo 5's BTP had like a 24 meter range if I remember correctly or maybe that might have been Warzone so just a little bit shorter than like traditional Halo. In the arena. Some of the feedback was that some players wanted to have a one hit melee instead of the two hit melee that we currently have right now within the game. Some people weren't totally sure of how the visibility of the flag works and the bug that allowed vehicles to push the flag disliked by most people which if that's a bug, good. That's something that definitely need to be fixed because what you can do is like grab a ghost right on Behemoth and then go over to the flag, just pick it up and then drop it. And then you can use the ghost to push the flag along, which is basically like speed running the flag, which is a really fun way to use the sandbox, but I don't think it's really intended. And 343 states that they have fixed this bug, so it will not be there at launch. And about the single melee hit that we've had traditionally with Halo, it looks like what they're gonna be doing is having like an effective melee with the flag, where it says it's still gonna take two hits with a flag to kill somebody if you're the flag holder, but the melee swing is faster than a player who is holding a weapon, so you actually have a super fast melee ability 
while holding the flag. I think this is a nice trade off right here. So you still have that advantage if you're a skilled player and can hit the melee and keep on accuracy. For the BTB side of the multiplayer, it was overall very well received, but some points of feedback were saying that the spawning more powerful vehicles later in the match meant players had fewer opportunities to use them and people complained that there was no Jeff Steitzer. Well, I have some excellent news for you on this. Because if you guys remember, Jeff Steitzer announcement of double kill, triple kill, overkill was not not in BTP because you have Agrina giving you callouts and also your AI as well. Then having a third voice within your head would be a little much, but people really want Jeff Stice to give him those calls. And so he actually is going to be coming back for those double kills and triple kill medals within BTB, but it looks like it's gonna be a post-launch feature. They might not be able to make it for December. But Steitzer is coming back to BTB just a little time after launch. And also my big complaint about BTB was the fact that we didn't really get a chance to use any of these heavy vehicles within the game. Sometimes they didn't spawn at all. And 343 says that we believe the progression of power allows for the end of the match to feel like a bigger moment kind of thing. They also said, don't forget, we did not have choppers or race within the, the vehicle pool when it comes to spawning awesome stuff. Which, like, I agree with, like, having the escalation of more powerful vehicles coming towards the end of the match. But a lot of times when I was playing BTB, either those powerful vehicles didn't spawn at all, or when they did, it was, like, five seconds left in the game. And also, I think that drop-off location for the vehicles isn't a good spot to have it. Either have it, like, on the side or behind the bases on fragmentation, I think would work out a lot better. Because it's a very obvious drop location it seems like every time like a new vehicle would drop in three or four Spartans would just kind of gather and wait for that vehicle to drop I hope they speed up that vehicle drop by the way because it takes forever so maybe if you're making it in a less obvious location more aware players will have opportunities to jump into those vehicles and I like this new system I just think it needs some minor tweaks to make it a really great system for you PC boys out there some points of feedback where the lack of exclusive full screen option was missed by some people and some players expressed a desire for additional performance optimizations well, the positives that they really did appreciate the improvements of performance, which I certainly experienced that. The performance was way better in Weekend 2. And also just like the a plethora of options was awesome. And in short, 343 mentions that from their findings and experiences and tests that full screen won't actually provide any performance increase. And though most games it, that does happen, apparently with Halo Infinite, not so much from their testing. So they're not looking to add any full screen option. Though if people really want it and people are really talking about it, they can do it later on. But this is like a not happening anytime soon kind of update. And they do mention they've actually made some more increases on improvements for optimization as well. So when the game finally does launch, it actually will be running better than it did in the flights, which I am all for that. Especially since upgrading graphics cards right now is well, basically impossible unless you want to spend a ridiculous amount from scalpers because the chip shortage is just making upgrading your graphics card nearly impossible for the general public. Next, we jump into the sandbox. The first part to talk about is aiming, which was a huge issue within the game. Saying that aiming was too difficult on both controller and mouse and keyboard. Performance impacted aiming. Using the scroll wheel to switch weapons was kind of inconsistent, which this is a very common feature for most PC gamers out there. And confusion over red radical range. So one thing 343 did is actually increase the aim assist on controller, which PC players I'm sure are hearing like their minds explode right now, but these are very tiny changes and I'll show you. All the weapons that are getting a buff are the Pulse Carbine, the VK-78 Commando, the BR-75 Heatwave, Ravager, Sidekick, Skewer, Sniper Rifle, along with the Shock Rifle is Turned On Hip Magnetism. If you guys remember, there is no aim assist from firing from the hip with the Shock Rifle. Now this is measured in degrees of the cone size, so the aim assist will activate a little bit sooner on some of these weapons. Personally, I actually really enjoyed the low aim assist. It definitely just makes a different feel of, a, of this Halo game. Try to balance out master keyboard and controller. I will say some weapons fell off, like the sniper rifle and the shock rifle as well, and especially the skewer. I am planning to put out a video which kind of breaks down how aiming works in Halo Infinite and how different it is compared to previous Halos and what kind of settings you can utilize to improve your aim within the game. So let me know in the comments guys if you want to see that video but we'll see how it all plays out there's no red reticle being displayed on pc because 343 found that there is a way to create a cheat where basically if your red reticle turns red then you can basically have perfect aim you know for hacks and stuff like that so they turned that off though they did mention some weapons like the plasma pistol pulse carbine and energy sword will have red reticle range activated within the pc side of things 
because those weapons are highly dependent on what you can tell if you're in red relic or range what the performance of the weapon will be and ultimately i didn't really notice the lack of red relic range i still kind of shot and played how i normally do anyways but of course i'm a guy who's been playing halo since ce so that stuff doesn't really bother me too much for a more inexperienced player or casual player this might affect your experience on pc next we're going to cover the weapons guys and there was actually a significant change to the commando in here saying that the plasma pistol also underperformed some people were worried about the bloom when it comes to the sidekick and vk78 commando people did not like the bloom that's on the no scope for the sniper rifle and they addressed it within this blog so the plasma pistol needs some love against spartans it uh, doesn't really do that great and the 343 notices this and they are going to be trying to look into ways to improve the plasma pistol against spartans so they're not going to be adding the emp effect which i'm actually glad they're not because a new electrical type of damage that we have within halo infinite kind of takes that role but they say these changes for the plasma pistol might not make it for launch but they're definitely looking into it and working on it it's in progress right now now when it comes to bloom for the vk 70 commando and the sidekick as well from 343's data that they looked at they said that that's the weapons are performing as expected though the vk78 commando it looks like the damage has actually been reduced at one bullet so it's actually gotten a nerf that will happen before the game launches so that's actually going to be a big change right there and they will not be making any adjustments to bloom right now but of course they'll keep an eye on it and if anything needs to be changed they'll do it now when it comes to the bloom for the no scoping of the sniper rifle if you guys don't know there is a bit of a random deviation when it comes to the no scopes on the sniper rifle and it looks like 343 is holding strong with that i would like to see it be reduced quite a bit, especially because more kind of like mid-range engagements, like lots of times you would need to no scope because if you're trying to scope in, it's just way too close and kind of difficult to use. But they say this is intended and how they want to have the sniper rifle used more for long range engagements, which definitely the way it's tuned and how it feels right now, it definitely tuned for much more long range engagements compared to previous Halo games. So if you want no bullet deviation on your no scopes, well, I wouldn't bet on that anytime soon. And when it comes to movement within the sandbox, people really liked it, but a lot of feedback was the increased physics impulses like on the grenade jumps and gravity hammer and split feedback when it comes to no player collision within the game. Now when it comes to the like grenade physics, being able to grenade jump and also have really crazy different kind of gravity hammer physics as well they said that they're going to be looking into it and they're going to be trying to maybe see if they can do it before launch but no guarantees on it and when it comes to player collision this is kind of intended i don't expect that they change anytime soon especially for social games i actually like the fact that you can just walk through players frees up a lot of frustrations of you know trying to go into cover and then another teammate's running right into you that kind of stuff though for competitive i would like to see player collision they don't mention that in this blog update though and for equipment within the sandbox people love the grapple shot the repulsor was a lot of fun as well but people really wanted to see a buff to the drop wall and also to the threat sensor if you guys remember from the second flight they actually buffed the drop wall deploy time which i think the drop wall is like in a pretty good spot right now it's just like i think it's just underwhelming compared to like the grapple shot and the repulsor and the thruster as well which are much more dynamically crazy gameplay changing kind of equipment where the drop wall is just kind of like a little wall you, you throw out i would like to see maybe a little bit more durability with the panels of the drop wall but i think you want that to have that be much more of a proactive element within the sandbox rather than a reactive element some people said they were right here that a lot of people wanted to act like the halo 3 bubble shield i do not want that to happen i hate how the bubble shield works in halo 3 it's super annoying really ruins the flow of combat and 343 states that the drop wall is working as intended so i would not expect to see any changes happen with it though personally i would like to see a little bit more sturdiness when it comes to the panels when it comes to the threat sensor they say the same kind of thing where it's kind of working as intended uh they said that since we haven't really had a chance to play with the entirety of the full sandbox of halo infinite it really could change how the threat sensor plays out but 343 says that they're going to continue to monitor the threat sensor to see how how it does play out with the full launch for the vehicles of the sandbox guys they said that the ghost felt a little too strong banshee wasn't effective enough and the scorpion was too difficult to drive 343 states that they're looking to do a kind of a long-term conversation about how the ghost plays out within the sandbox but i think that's a nice way of saying not you don't have any changes anytime soon for the banshee they are looking to increase the durability and effectiveness of the banshee bomb uh they're currently working on it right now but they don't really give us a time frame it's gonna be like right after launch or something like that so it's kind of like a looking into post-launch kind of thing but the tank they say that's meant to be like a slow moving kind of vehicle which does make sense they say they are investigating a way to tighten the turn radius without reducing the turn rate because from like the two times i got to use a tank within like the 20 hours plus i put into the flight guys 
Uh, I do remember like like seeing like the reticle and the vehicle kind of being not in sync really when it comes to movement. I think that's the biggest issue. They touched on some UI UX experience that we kind of already touched on this earlier. They actually mentioned specifically the second grenade not being able to see that. They say that a player's inventory can be improved and will be addressed both in size and layout in an upcoming release. So they are currently looking into it. So let's breathe in and release because that's all the information within this blog update. So let's recap everything about it. So let's talk about those four main categories I talked about earlier, guys. This is everything that's going to be happening pre-launch. That the BTB radar has been increased from 18 meters to 22 meters. The flag melee is still a two-hit melee, but it's faster than a weapon melee. There will be no vehicle flag running. Improved performance on PC. The aim assist cone on controller has been improved just slightly for many weapons. And the VK-78 commando has a one bullet nerf, so it'll take one more bullet to deal out that kill. Now what's going to be happening post-launch? Well, they're going to be adding in Jeff Steiser's announcements in BT and they're also going to be changing up the UI size and layout as well. Next is the looking into section. This is the stuff that 343 is currently working on or looking into right now to change at the moment. One is the Needler Super Combine sound, auto sprint, additional color support, double XP being in match time, not in real time, mouse wheel weapon swapping, Banshee durability and Banshee bomb buff, which I said is going to be kind of like a thing to look into slash post launch kind of thing. They're looking to tighten up the controls for the tank, a buff for the plasma pistol against Spartans, hammer physics, as well as grenade physics, and also improving player inventory for the UI side of things. And lastly, these are the things that 343 is looking in, monitoring, and pretty much not going to be happening anytime soon for changes within Halo Infinite. One is the HUD customization, not going to allow players for that. Career ranking progression, no friends in training mode because the custom games will be resolved solving that. ETB vehicle spawning looks to be about the same from the flight. No PC full screen option. The ability to turn off outlines looks like it won't be happening anytime soon. No scope bloom reduction, not going to be happening anytime soon there either. Player collisions going to be staying the same. The drop hole and the threat sensor are going to be staying the same as well as a ghost nerf. That gets in. They're looking into doing a potential nerf, but they just need to monitor it a little bit more. Those are all the details for this blog update, guys. If you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. If you missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. A link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.